Hey, what's up, guys? In this video, wait, let me minimize this just a little bit. We're gonna be doing a tier list of the Abyss of Legends, all boss fights. I just finished the Abyss, uh, as you might have seen on my channel. I probably, I don't know if I'm gonna upload this one first, the opening, but I mean, whichever one you see first, you'll know I did Abyss if you saw the previous one. But I wanted to do this video for a while, but I was like, you know, what? I'll wait until I do the fifth path or my last path, so I could have like a full video. I thought one fight was gonna be super easy, but it really wasn't. So I'm glad I waited for this tier list. So um, let's just start away. Let me just show you the ranks. We have super easy fights, like the fights you could pretty much just farm, like super easy, and like um, you can some of them you can one shot. They're just really easy. This one is decent. It's like not. It's still pretty easy, but you can't like really one shot it early, and it might take a few revives just because like the health pools. We have medium. They're like pretty. They're not like super hard, but they're like they're pretty. They're difficult in their own way, in some way or another. We have a super hard, the ones that are super hard. And we have the cheek spreaders. These ones are gonna fucking rape you, dude. Some of these were so annoying. Plus, when you get emotional, and plus when you have bad RNG, and when the enemy decides to up like a retard. Um, yeah, it's really annoying. Just really, really annoying. So, we're gonna start off with this first one. Also, I don't know why Red Skull's white background. That's kind of weird, but tragic. Um, so first one, we start with Bishop. Bishop is easily super easy. I don't know if you've ever seen this fight. Um, once he gets to 30 of those, like, charges, he starts killing himself, and he starts taking the damage cap every second or every tick. 85,000 damage. So you can easily one-shot this fight with Doom. I mean, yeah, it's just a super easy one-shot. Also, one disclaimer is I'm going to rank these based on how my experiences went. And for some people that have characters like Nick Fury, characters I don't have, some fights are harder than others. So if I put something in a rank that's higher than you, I'll tell you why normally because I don't have a certain good counter for it. So yeah, just keep that in mind too. That my list is definitely be different with yours, <laughs> especially with some of the picks I do. So next, we got this killing, Cable. And Cable is the fight I just did like an hour or two ago, and I was so pissed off. First of all, this fight, I thought it was going to be super easy because you could just use Void and Heal Reversal. No, 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 that's not how it works, dude. My luck, by the way, in that last path, like, everything that could go wrong basically did go wrong. This fight sucks so much dick because every time you crit him, he gets, like, these energy charges. And every time he hits into your block, like, a little bit of energy detonates. So after, like, 10 crits or, like, just a few crits, really, he just starts hitting your block with a special one and, like, just normal blocks. And it starts doing a crap ton of damage. And the only way to really do damage in this fight... Um, like for me is void just to like heal reversal because Aegon would just take so much damage back because every time he crits he gets more energy damage back so that would just be not fun and then one special one and I'm pretty much dead um, Cable with the void should have been easy was the plan but dude my RNG was ass I checked 15 times just to make sure that percentage for regen was only 15% it felt like a point zero 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 one percent this thing never triggered I always died before it triggered because eventually I'd get enough crits and he would just start special warning into my block it just did too much and I'd die it would only trigger the regen when I just start the fight and I don't have any petrifies up yet it was so annoying I was literally having a mental breakdown in this fight I wanted to do kill myself this fight easily super hard just if the AI was nice and I could have just gotten one nice setup and two heals or one or two regens when I got my thing fully set up, it would have been so easy. I mean, I saw a video of this someone using Void and he like two shot him. It was the easiest thing ever. When I went to that fight, my RNG was so bad. You have no idea. It was the worst thing I've ever done. So next fight, we got Captain Marvel movie. So she, I did this fight twice, I think, in all of the best. Um, and... One of the times I did it was in the super easy column, and one of the times I did it was in definitely the cheek spreader column. So the first time I did this fight was with Symbio Supreme, and this was her pre. This is pre before the fix, where she would actually take normal damage. And what makes her hard is if you have over a bar and a half of power, I think it is, um, you start taking energy damage and you just basically die. Symbio Supreme is terrible for this fight. Don't bring him up, but he was my only mystic option at the time. And this fight was so annoying i died like 16 times or something it, i was so pissed off because you could barely do any damage i was eventually just using Aegon, but it just it was not working and, oh and every like 10 seconds you and her both get like a massive power boost the amount of times i actually remember now thinking about it because this was only my first run it was a long time ago i remember the first time i fought her and she would not throw her specials specials and she just kept going to special three so and then the second time i did it, it was with doom and it was fixed damage so it was an easy one shot 
So I'm gonna just slap her straight in the middle and the medium. So if it was the original, it'd be cheek spreader, and if it was always the easy version, it'd be super easy. Um, next we got Call Obsidian. You can find him, I think, once or twice. And um, every time we nullify one of his buffs, he takes one percent of his total health. And um, his special one is like ten buffs, so Doom he could just spam special ones, and he dies super easily. So yeah, this fight was super easy. Next, we have Cyclops. I think I only do this fight one time, um, and it was on the first path that you do, the easy path. It was actually a fun fight. I'll give him that. It was every time he basically throws a special, um, you have to either block it, and it'll be a perfect block guaranteed. So good job, Kabam, for not screwing us on that one. Um, or Dexing it, and it goes back and forth. So it's just kind of like got to get into the mindset of pair a special one, then dodge special one, then pair a special one. I thought it was just a fun fight. It was 5.7 million out there, so it's kind of chunky, I think. And, um, yeah, it was just a fun fight. So I'll just put in them decent. It was decent. They were decently challenging, at least. Next, we got Darkhawk. Um, Darkhawk, you fight him three times as the first fight in Abyss. So I normally used him as a ramp up for Aegon. Every 10 hits, you switch, you give him all your power. And you basically don't want Darkhawk to get the special twos because then he goes invisible. Because I didn't have Human Torch or anything. So Human Torch is obviously easy one shot, but Aegon. You can do it in like four revives or whatever, and it's a good building for your thing. You just have to like time your hits. Every tenth hit, make sure you don't have enough power to give him two bars because you're going to give your power to him. So it's just baiting a lot of special ones and a lot of block damage, but the block damage isn't that significant. So it's just a pretty decent fight. It's like, I'd put it, uh, yeah, probably just decent. It's not like super hard, but it's just kind of annoying because you die because a lot of block damage. Next, we got Deadpool and. I used, because I don't have a 5 star or 6 star human torch, so I used 4 star human torch, I think? Yeah, I used 4 star, and it was just super easy, you just heal reversal, and um, yeah, you just, he has, he has like a, so much healing, so you just get a few smolders up and a few incinerates on them, and he just kills himself. Next we got um, Dormammu, and this fight was, um, so once again, I don't have human torch, and my void was like sig 5. And I really hated using Void because he hit like a fucking noodle. Um, his util still works at Sig 5, but his damage is really bad. Especially when I took off Suicides, it was just painful. So for Dormammu, I just took off Dexterity and just used Doom. And it was pretty easy. You get off like 25% each time. It was pretty good. So it was not super easy, but it was definitely like a decent fight. Um, but it wasn't super hard. Next, we got Red Skull. Uh, Red Skull is not fun just terrible fight um you try this guy three fucking times and basically what makes him hard is you basically do no damage i mean you do something but it's like barely anything until you get him over two bars of power and then you do like a little bit of bonus damage so the obvious candidate was doomed to keep him over three two bars of power like most of the time and i did this fight three times and i found that you could literally um unless you have like a rank three doom like max boosted from my um, like half boosted sometimes max boosted um five star max out doom i can only do max like 15 percent off this guy each time and it took an average of like eight revives every time because there's a few miss ups and like evades and yeah it's just kind of annoying and this fight was just not fun so i'm putting this straight in super hard because the amount of time this fight takes too it's just so beefy it's just annoying so next we have ghost ghost is she just basically is 2.7 million. She's a default fight, but she has the same note as Darkhawk, which for a tech character, they have an armor up basically, and you can stop the power switch, or like giving them your power, the every 10 hit thing, if you have an armor break, but you when you use an Aegon, you don't. So you just basically don't do any specials in this fight. So it, it was just, it wasn't super easy. It wasn't like cheesy, but it was just like, you couldn't use specials. It was just kind of annoying, but it was pretty easy. It was pretty decent, not that hard. Next we have Ghost Rider. Um, this fight I only did once. It was the last path one I just did, and it's every I think twenty ish seconds he puts an incinerate on you, and it is kind of annoying because sometimes you have to like time it, and sometimes maybe Aegon, or maybe he's playing passive and you can't get a hit on. So sometimes it's kind of annoying, but it's really not that bad. I would just say it's decent. It's not like super hard. It's not medium difficulty, but it's not super easy either. Um, next we have Aegon. 
Aegon is just Aegon. He's just like a normal fight, basically. Except um, one thing to remember is you have like I think a hundred percent ability accuracy reduction on yourself. So when you use Aegon yourself, you don't trigger like any of your things unless you're using a special. So it's kind of weird. Um, but you still get your damage off with your crits. You just don't have like the Furies, but you're still hitting very hard. So it's like it's just these. I mean, it's not like ultra hard or anything. It's just whatever. It's just whatever. Um, yeah. So very fun fight next oh my fucking god when i said i was glad that there was only one of these in the best i make sure i check the whole map i was like I'm, i need to see there's only one of these pieces of shit in abyss okay this guy sucks so much wiener you have no idea and it wasn't even my fault oh excuse me this guy had a node it just got fixed i'm pretty sure but before it got fixed, the node said critical hits against him. What? No, I think it was like guaranteed crit. No, I think it was just it was just crits against him. Take, I mean, do 0.9 percent less damage, so like one percent less damage. I was just thinking, okay, I mean, just one percent less damage. I'll just do just okay. Hang on. And you need a character that can armor break him because if you don't have an armor break him, you basically do no damage whatsoever. Um, like it, so like a lot of people bring Nick Fury for this fight, but once again, I don't have Nick Fury. So I bought Corvus with some charges, and I thought it'd be hunky dory fun. And let me remind you also for Abyss, you normally take off suicides because there's a lot of fights like Doom and Void and Human Torch. So you're not really running suicides in the Abyss, so you're attacking even weaker than you usually would. So my Corvus, dude, so okay, I was so confused. I thought I misread the road node, I reread it like six times. And then I asked one of my lines, and I said, oh, yeah, it's glitched. Instead of 1% less damage, it should be, like, 60% less damage from crits. And I was like, oh, my God. That's why my hits with Aegon, or not Aegon, with Corvus are doing literally tickling amounts of damage. Like, all 20 of my charges were, like, 3% or something of his health. It was so bad, I'm telling you. And he would trigger his random regen at times, and the regen was really strong, so you just have to not hit him. It was so bad. And I realized something. I don't know if they fixed this, but when he has the armor buff, you pretty much can't do damage to him, like physical damage or energy damage. You can only do like debuffs unless you have an armor break on him. I don't know if this was glitched, but I found out that I could just use Aegon. So it was basically just an Aegon fight, um, but with 60% less damage. It, I think it was 66. It was something like, you only were doing like 30% damage, I remember. It was... It was 33% damage-ish. No, I think it was 65% crit reduction, not 60. So it's basically 66. So you're doing like 33% of your damage. Like a third, really. And it's a 5.7 million green goblin. So if you do the math, add it up to like... It felt like a 16 or 17 million health fight with Aegon. This was so annoying. Plus it's green goblin. He has annoying ass specials. He has that regen. It was one of the worst experiences I've had in Abyss. By far, this fight sucks so much long, dude. It goes into the cheek spreader category easily, without a shadow of a doubt in my mind. This fight sucked dick. Whoever created this fight, kill yourself or change it or fix it because it sucks. It should be crits do normal damage because why the fuck would it just be 65% less? I don't know if they changed it, but... Oh my god, that fight sucked. I thought I could just bring Corvus and be fine. Nope. It was literally just an Aegon fight with 16, 17 million health. It was just so unenjoyable. I wanted to kill myself during the entire experience, which is, I guess, what the devs wanted. So yeah, that goes in cheek spreaders. Green Goblin, kill yourself. Okay, next we got Havoc. Um, Havoc, there's two Havocs. He's on path three. Both Havocs are on the same path. I just brought in Colossus. And with... I run willpower i think it's, yeah willpower and um his plasmas were just healing me with colossus i have permanent armor it was just one thing i kind of annoying is the reparry because it's mediums i think you can't stun something as lights you can stun or parry so that was kind of annoying but other than that it was a pretty just decent fight but um i got hit with a special one a few times so it's kind of annoying but it's definitely i would definitely say it's a medium tier fight because he's just havoc you get hit with any specials by accident you're basically just dead and Colossus doesn't hit that hard in the... I'm um, no. Okay, listen. Let me, no. Before I have angry people, Colossus definitely hits hard. But in the Abyss, you'd rather have Aegon just ramming through fights. And Colossus, you have to get the stun, basically. You don't need the stun, but it definitely helps. And in Abyss, you don't have infinite hits. So the least hits amount is, like, 
or like better. And Colossus only has two attacks on his heavy, so it's really good for the amount of hits. But you can't stun in every parry because sometimes he doesn't get stunned because of the mediums thing. So it was just long, kind of. So yeah, it's just not the most fun. Next we have Howard the Duck. This fight, um, just kind of long. He starts. He's 5.7 million health. You fight him like twice. Um, he starts with like these 30 indestructible charges. If you heavy attack, it takes off one, and if you crit, it takes off one. So with Aegon, you just heavy, and each heavy is normally a crit, so it takes off two. So like, I don't know, like 10 heavy attacks, 12, 15, because some of them won't crit. And then all those indestructibles are gone, and you just fight normally. You you have to watch out for the healing at 60 and 30%. Um, this fight is just long. It's pretty much all it is. Um, I'm definitely going to... Um, I don't know, I'll probably just put it in medium. I think most 5.7 million health fights are going to be in medium, just because... Um, they're just long, and you have to use a few more revives. Some of them might be in decent or super easy, because they're either fun, like uh, this guy, or cheesy, like this guy, or this guy, because I'm pretty sure both these are 5.7 mil. Um, so yeah, 5.7 mil are just probably naturally just going to be in here, just because they're longer, more chances to make mistakes. So yeah. Next we got Gladiator Hulk. This guy, um, I'm kind of annoyed they, they um, fixed the bug. We're at 25% health. He doesn't. He puts a heal block on himself. But basically, how this fight works is every time you get to 20% health, um, he either regen gets a regen like a massive regen or a massive fury. Um, and he has a I don't know what this thing is, but it basically just means you hit like a noodle. So you can't do this fight with Aegon. Actually, I mean no. Listen, let me rephrase that. You can only by spamming special twos. Your normal hits do like 300 damage or something. So theoretically, I mean, you could, but it would take thousands of Odins, and it would just be like 20 hours of gameplay. It would just not be fun, basically. So the way people do this fight is either debuffs, or what the tactic is, is use Void, that's what I did, and get like all your Petrifies and stuff set up, and then get yourself to 20%, and just hope he procs regen. So the reason this fight's annoying is because sometimes you might slip up, and he might hit you before you get to 20%, and he gets the regen, and you're not ready, he heals, I happened to me like once or twice, it's kind of annoying, or, um, it's 50-50 regen or fury, so you can get all your shit set up, waste or revive, and then he just gets the fury, and you wasted that try, the try just does nothing, so you're just kind of annoyed, but you can only cheese him down 75%, at 25% health, he puts a heal block on himself, permanent, so, if the last 25% health, you need debuff. So, I just used Aegon and spam special twos. And then I think on the other run, I used Quake. And Quake, I'm pretty sure I just one shot his last 25%. It was just long as fuck. So, yeah, this fight is really hard. It's just a long as shit. It's just annoying with the RNG. It's just not fun, basically. Just not fun. So, yeah, that's Gladiator Hulk. You have to fight him twice. I actually got Hyperion. I mean, not much to say. 2.7 million. He's decent. He's just Doom. Or Symbio Supreme food. I mean, not much special about him. Oh, also, I think he has a node, though, that if you don't nullify a buff within 25 or 30 seconds, he gets, like, a 15-second unstoppable. So if you're using, like, a Mystic character, that the node really doesn't even exist, but if you're using someone like Aegon, um, yeah, that's going to screw you. So definitely don't go into Abyss unless you have a strong Mystic character. Next, you have Invisible Woman. Um, this fight is really fucking annoying. Like... I don't know if I should put her medium. No, she's definitely harder than medium. She's definitely going to be super hard for me. Only because I don't have Nick Fury. If you have Nick Fury, this fight's straight and super easy. Because he's stun immune. But what makes her hard is some of the smaller science characters have a node that um, every time you get to a bar power or they get a bar bar power, you get a passive yellow jacket like, you know, sting thing on you. And when it runs out, it stuns you. Or you just have to throw a special and take the damage. And you won't take the damage if they have a debuff on them. So you could use Aegon and use like that node. Or use that one mastery that like puts weaknesses on the, on them or something. Or you could just take the damage. The damage isn't that much. But the thing that makes this fight hard is you only have a small window of damage. Because Invisible Woman has their shield. And her shield is 10% of her max health. She has the smallest health pool in Abyss. It's only 2.1 million. I'm pretty sure every other fight is 2.7 or 5.7, unless it's the Collector who has 4 million. But she has 2.1 million. I think they realized they had to do that because her shield. So before you could actually do any damage, 
Um, you have to do 200,000 damage to her before you could start doing like any damage really. So it's really annoying. Um, I didn't have Nick Fury. Nick Fury is great for this because in his second phase he's stun immune. So you don't have to worry about the yellow jacket sting, uh, stinger things. What are they called? Power stings I think. Yeah. So this fight was just not fun. I used Archangel for it because if you have a debuff on them when the timer runs out on the uh, power sting you won't get stunned. So it worked but it was just annoying because I have to do like 200,000 damage. And then I could do my damage. If I was running suicides, it would be a lot easier. But Archangel without suicides is definitely not as good. I mean, I, I, that's what I realized from the Abyss. I realized how much the suicides just make your character so much more voided out. It's just insane. Um, so yeah, that fight pretty hard fight, honestly. If you have Nick Fury, it's super easy though. Um, next we got uh, Iron Man Infinity War. Um, this fight is just. A big Iron Man Infinity War that steals your power, like Ghost and Darkhawk, the same thing. I'm just putting him in medium because he's just Iron Man Infinity War. You, they were the last 15% health. I found the best character was Corvus. I did the entire 15% health in one try. Um, you just get a few charges earlier in the quest. And then anyway, at 15% health, you just bring him in. And since you have armor breaks, he won't steal your power. And yeah, you can just do the last 15% health with Corvus. It's pretty easy, so... Yeah, he's just a medium, just because he's Iron Man Infinity War, annoying specials, power gain, armor, all that. Next, we got Joe Fix It. Um, I'm going to put him probably in medium, only because he's 5.7 mil, and he has this. He's basically just a big Joe Fix It, but he can start with his regen phase, which is really annoying. If he starts with the heart, he'll just regen permanently the whole fight, and you cannot damage it. If you see this heart, you just have to back out. That happened a few times, which is really annoying. So, just for that reason, he's in medium. It's just an annoying fight, because if he gets hearts, you just have to back out. That happened a few times, where I just literally joined the fight. Kind of like using Starlord against Maestro and Labyrinth, like back in the old days, that he could trigger that regen, you just have to back out. It's like that. So yeah, it's just it's just annoying. Actually, you have Karnak, he just goes super easy. It's basically 5.7 million health, but... Parry and dexterity don't work, and neither of you gain power. So the tactic, and every one of your hits in the combo meter, you do more damage. So basically, the tactic is just Aegon heavy spam in the corner, and yeah, that's just it. It takes like two tries, basically. Just two lives. One try, you can get him down like 60, 70%, and the next try, you can just kill him. It's just, it's just, you just heavy spam in the corner. That's like all it is. So yeah, there's not much to it. Next we have um, Killmonger. Killmonger, he's 2.7 million health, but he's Killmonger. That's literally it. That's, he's just annoying because sometimes you take crazy damage. You just have to wait out the reverb. Um, yeah, it's just annoying. That's basically all there is to it. Next you have Korg. Um, Korg, uh, either decent or medium. I, probably, uh, I think I'm going to put him in decent because he's 2.7 million health. You can use Doom, that's what people were doing, but for me, I just used Aegon because I find it really good over the war seasons of fighting Korg, like back in the old day of Korg was a defender, of light intercepts. So, for me, I just broke his shields over and over again until he had no more rock stacks, and I just played the fight normally like Aegon. So it really wasn't that hard. Um, if you get really good with the light intercepts, that's it's a really easy fight, honestly. Um, you just... He starts with 9, then 8, then 7, then goes down, obviously, like Korg does. And yeah, you just play it normally. You get up to a few special 3s, just knock out one full rock thing in one try. It's just an easy... It's not that hard of a fight. It's only 2.7 million health, so yeah. Um, only decent. Loki, he just goes in the decent. I mean, he's 5.7 million health, and he has to know that he basically is constantly draining your power. And if you get to 0, you basically die. And you can basically just like with normally hitting them, you could just kind of out um, gain power. So it's not like that much of a threat that part. You just have to play aggressive. It's not that hard though. So it's just a 5.7 million health Loki that just you can't leave their specials against. Unless you have like two bars of power and you're like 99% away from the third one. So when you throw it, you don't go down and die. Um, so yeah. Next you have a Luke Cage. Um, Luke Cage was. Probably, probably just medium. He's not that hard with spells with Spider-Man. Um, you put in a web foam. He's 5.7 million health. And I two-shot him yesterday. You just It's a long-ass fight. I think my first life was like 600 hits. And my second was like 1,400 to kill him. You just... He, basically, every 30 seconds, he goes unstoppable and unblockable. 
and the only way to end it is intercepting, or you could just be stealth suit Spider-Man. And then once he goes over his hit counter, once you get like the 240 hits, whatever it is, um, you just bait out his power gain for a second, and then he's permanently unstoppable and blockable, but you just play it normally, you just keep your web foam up, and you can still hit him because you're stealth suit Spider-Man. So you can one-shot it, yeah, I two-shot it, so yeah, it's just not that hard once you get the hang of it. Once you get... This fight really taught me how to play. I ranked five stealth Spider-Man just for this fight. I know the first try it was really bad, but towards the end, my third time fighting him, because you have to fight him three times, I mean, it was pretty easy. I just learned how to play Stealth Spider-Man from this fight. Next you got Massacre. I'm putting... Massacre would be super easy for me, but I usually do this fight twice, and on the second time I fought him, uh, my Aegon was already had a thousand hits, so it was not that easy. Basically, the way he works, uh, if you don't know, is... Um, Every, you, he only takes damage through block, and every time you hit him, he has like an armor break charge on him. You can build it up to 99 at most, and then when you hit in this block with Aegon with the crits, it's like hitting like the max damage cap every time. So I think you can one shot this fight with Aegon or get really close. Um, the fight's really fun with Aegon, I would put it in super easy. But this last path that I did, my Aegon, I meant to not get him over a thousand hits, but I kept screwing up and just getting charges by accident, by like dying to like corpse rock charges or something i don't know just something that like didn't affect my hits so i eventually got to a thousand so i do stealth suit spider-man it took like 10 revives it's really not fun without corvus or aegon so i definitely recommend not letting your aegon get to a thousand hits because it makes this fight a breeze but i'm putting him in the medium because oh so he's 5.7 million health but aegon i think can get really close to one shot or maybe one shot if you play it perfectly Next we got Medusa, she just is decent, she's the same thing as Hyperion, basically, 2.7 million health cosmic, you just need a strong mystic, um, yeah, that's it. Next we got Mephisto, Mephisto's in medium, he would be so easy, you could one-shot him, you can one-shot him with Human Torch very easily, mm -mm. but as we know, I don't have Human Torch, <laughs> so, yeah, it's just, that's basically it, you don't have Human Torch, you just have to kill yourself, basically, and I'd use Void. Actually, I used Blade for the first run, because I didn't have Void yet. Blade worked in, like, five revives. Actually, wasn't that bad. Void can work in, like, two revives. But my Void is, like, sick five, and he hits, like, a noodle once again. So it was a little bit more annoying. So, yeah, it's basically just a big Mephisto. Also, they turned off his regen in the Abyss. Like, he won't get this regen charges, so you don't have to worry about that. So that's cool. Next, we got... What's his name? Mr. Sinister... Um, he's just decent. I don't have Human Torch once again. Because Human Torch is really good for this fight without the pre-fight. Because you put the incinerates on him, and then a special one, he throws them back to you. So you get smolders really easily in this fight. But once again, I don't have Human Torch. I used... Not Void, because Void... I used Void once, and he just... He hits too weakly, dude. I couldn't use Void. I, I, he's such a noodle, it really hurt, dude. I think he does a lot more damage at Sig 200. His buffs stay a lot longer. They do a lot more damage. It, it boosts his attack a lot more when he's in fear of the void. But at low Sig, he's really bad. Like, just not good. He still has the util, but his damage is just bad. So I use Dr. Doom. In the Abyss, I found Doom never fucking crit anyway. I don't know why my crit rating with Doom was ass. Um, so this one was just Doom fight. I could, uh, you could get like 25, 30% off each try. It wasn't even that bad. <laughs> my Doom like never crits anyway. Next, we got Modok. Modok is the same as Invisible. Oh, sorry. Modok is the same as Invisible Woman, um, but he doesn't have the invisibility, so you can just nail him with Aegon at a thousand hits. This fight is very easy. You can like two shot him. He's like two points from million health. I would put him in super easy, but I know that not everyone can. There has Aegon, so this fight's kind of annoying without Aegon at a thousand hits. If Aegon's not at a thousand hits, this fight's not that fun. He is the same thing as Invisible Woman, though, where. He puts those power stings on you, and you need, you'll get stunned. But the power stings don't do that much damage, so you could just ram through this fight with Aegon and just take the damage. Um, so, yeah. I would put it in super easy, but he's on, like, the edge. He's a little bit too... He's not that cheesy, like these two, or this guy, or this guy, to be in super easy. Next, we got Morda. Um, it's just a big Morda. <laughs> um, actually, I'm going to put him in medium only because... He has this really annoying thing that's happened so many times when I fought him. When he gets his evade, like the normal abyss evade, like the 1% or whatever, and you you can't use Aegon for this fight, so you can't counter evade, because he... I forgot how, why, but 
I don't know. I think these Mystic characters don't like buffs or something, so I use Doom. And, um, maybe you can use Aegon, I don't know. But I use Doom, and, um, every time he evades, it counts it as an Astral Evade in his abilities, so you get the damage on you, and I've died to that so many times, so it's really annoying. Next, we got Morningstar. Just a big Morningstar that puts bleeds on you. Not that deep, honestly. Not that much to it. Next, we got Old Man Logan. This fight is super easy. He gains, like, a crap ton of region all the time, and you could just use Void and reverse it i used a four star void because i, I had a five star void for the last three runs but the, for the first two runs on the deadpool and on the uh, old man logan i only had four star void and four star human torch so hmm. sorry i had to drink so that's what i use next we got omega red he's just a big omega red he's just decent i mean the thing is with him every time you crit he gains a tiny bit more power each time so with Aegon, i mean Aegon. He's fine. He's just you're just dodging a lot of special ones. If you have Punisher 2099, and he would be in Sheik Spider. Eh, I don't know if he's in Sheik Spider, honestly. He does have a lot of block damage and he's really annoying. But you have to understand, um, everything has context, and this fight's right after Green Goblin, and Green Goblin made this fight look so much better in comparison. Because Green Goblin was so much worse in this fight, I couldn't even express to you how bad that fight was. It was literally like a 17 million health fight. This fight's just a shit ton of block damage. He's just annoying as fuck. And he's 5.7 million health, so he's definitely super hard. Next, we have Quake, 5.7 million health. She has these Aftershock charges. But if you're using Aegon like you should be, then you don't need to worry about it. Because she builds up to 100, and every time you crit or bleed, so Nick Fear or Aegon, it goes down. Since, since you're always critting with Aegon, it just never goes above like 5, so you're fine. Don't even worry about it. Next, we have Symbio Supreme. Um. This fight, uh, I, I, yeah, I'll probably put it in Cheek Spiders. This fight's really annoying. I don't have Human Torch, which I think may be the best option, but I think I used the second best. I don't know for sure. I used Archangel. Basically, he's 5.7 million health, and after you hit 20 crits against him, you die. So you just don't want to crit at all. So you, I just played Archangel. You could get like 10% off each time, but it was just really annoying, honestly. Um... So yeah, it was just an unknown fight. That's all there really is to it. Um, this fight kind of sucked. Kind of just sucks. If you get 20 crits, you just die. So you just can't use the Aegon on this fight. Human Torch, probably the best option. Archangel, probably best second. I don't know. Um, so yeah, it's just a long fight and it's annoying. Next we have Taskmaster. It, it takes less damage from your hits, but your special attacks have like prowess and it does a lot more. So it's just a fun fight, really. It's not, like, that deep. It's just you hit a little bit weaker, but your specials hit a lot harder. So you just, yeah, not that much to him. Next, we have Champion. It's the same as Hyperion or Medusa, just 2.7 million Cosmic. It gets the Unstoppable. Good Mystic, it'll be fine. Now, I'm going to do something very controversial with this Hood placement. Because Hood is, wait, is he 5.7 million? I think he's 5.7 million. He needs to know that every, like... 10 sec or every 20 seconds he puts a bleed and poison on you so he would be in like the same category as ghost rider but for me i did this fight yesterday and oh my god i have never had a worse time in my life actually i have but this was this fight should have been so like i wrote this down this fight should have taken like three revives or something dude he goes straight mm. he goes straight into cheeks betters this fight sucked dick because this guy I don't know what the fuck was wrong with the AI in this fight. He, I swear to God, for like 40 minutes during this fight, he refused. And when I say refused, I mean he fucking refused to throw his specials. And I would just die to the bleed and poison. Because I'm trying to just wait on specials. Or if I push him over, he gets to a special too, and you just take block damage. And he's invisible. I'm telling you, this fight should be in the decent ten, 9 out of 10 times. But for some reason, when I fought him... When I, listen, I know there's some opponents that play defensively, but, like, this was, like, not normal. Like, this was, like, not natural. What was going on? I swear to God, for 40 minutes, every special took, like, 20 seconds to bait out. It was the most frustrating and tilting experience I've had in a long time. This fight was so annoying. I don't know why, but this fight... He literally wouldn't throw his specials. I, that's it. That's all there is to say to it. It's just... 
It's just he literally won their specials. It ain't that deep. It should have been a very simple fight, but he wanted to play like an absolute just I don't even know just so aged just such a terrible fight he just didn't throw his specials I don't like it's just so weird I've never experienced a fight like that next we have Thing Thing 2.7 million health it's just a big thing that's like all it is um I'm putting it in decent only because it maybe it'll be medium but it is for me I mean the thing is super easy to fight so I'm fine next we have for Ragnarok this fight's really annoying because if he has a debuff on him, he gains crazy, crazy power. So you can't parry, which is fine by me. I can intercept pretty easily. And with Aegon un unblockable, it's even easier. I don't even need to intercept. The thing that makes this fight hard is Aegon special 2 and 3 have um, debuffs on them. So you can really only use special 1. And you basically have to spam special 1s because he gains a crap ton of power every 20 hits, like normal Thor Ragnarok, on top of the debuff power gain. But I've seen clips of people who don't know how to intercept well just get destroyed by this guy because he just keeps gaining so much power from the parries. But this fight was just kind of annoying. That's really all it was. It was just really annoying. He just I kept having to throw special ones, which made the fight last a lot less time with Aegon. And his special one hits really weak, so I didn't get that much damage off each try like I normally would. It was just kind of annoying. He was just getting crazy power. And the few times he got special three, it was not fun, as you can imagine. Uh, next we have Venom the Duck. This fight's easy as shit. You can cheese it with Symbiote Supreme. That's what exactly what I did in my first run. Um, basically, he starts with ten buffs, random buffs that can't be regen buffs, and any of his like his buffs is what I'm saying. And every time he throws a special one, he gains another ten buffs. So what I do with Symbiote Supreme is right when the fight starts, you already are at three bars of power because Mystic Dispersion is Symbiote Supreme erases all the buffs. Throw a special three. It does the damage cap. Um, wait, does it do the damage cap? No, no, it didn't do the damage cap for the first special three. But then it pushes them to a special one. Oh, wait, wait, actually, I remember. So once you get the first special three out of the way, you get to a special one. You get to him into a special one. He throws it. You're already at another special three because the first one nullified all the buffs. So you're already at another three buffs bars of power like right when you throw your special three you nullify 10 of his buffs you're already at another special three you wait for him to throw his special one so he gains another 10 buffs and then you special three again you get to another special three you have to bait another one of his 